powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Janelle Slade. Jay is off tonight. A partial government shutdown just 24 hours away, but Congress isn't backing down yet. Tonight, the House signing off on a funding bill that includes the president's $5 billion border wall. But that bill expected to face a number of hurdles in the Senate. And ahead of the impending partial shutdown, the president did sign off on the long-anticipated farm bill today. At that signing, Trump announced he would not agree to a bill that didn't include funding for the wall. This also prompting a GoFundMe account today that has reached nearly $10.4 million in an effort to help fund that wall. Now, if a partial shutdown goes through, more than 400,000 federal workers will be furloughed. Other big news out of Washington today, Secretary of Defense James Mattis will step down from his position in February. That announcement comes after the president made the controversial decision to pull U.S. soldiers from Syria and Afghanistan. Nicole Killian has more details from the White House. In a tweet, President Donald Trump announced Defense Secretary James Mattis is retiring in two months. Secretary Mattis came in, he met with the president, and they made the decision. Mattis wrote to the president in his resignation letter, because you have the right to have a Secretary of Defense whose views are better aligned with yours on these and other subjects, I believe it is right for me to step down from my position. This comes a day after President Trump announced he is withdrawing U.S. troops from Syria, declaring victory against ISIS. White House officials indicated that in the end, the decision was the president's. It was also met with condemnation from members of the president's own party. I don't know how this decision was made. It literally came out of left field. It has rattled the world. Mattis is the sixth cabinet secretary to resign or be forced out since President Trump took office. Everything that indicates stability, everything that indicates strength, everything that indicates knowledge is leaving this administration. James Mattis' last day will be February 28th. Nicole Killian, CBS News, The White House. Tonight, mixed reactions on General Mattis' departure from Senator John Tester. Quote, chaos in President Trump's administration threatens our national security. The president must listen to his military leaders and avoid making shoot-from-the-hip decisions that put Americans and our allies in harm's way. Whereas Senator Steve Daines took time to praise General Mattis for his service. Quote, you have made great strides at the Pentagon, ensuring that our military is ready, our country is better for it. In other news tonight, this fall, the Montana State Corrections Department announced a major reorganization. It included some cost-saving moves, personnel changes, and the closure of a program in Boulder. But former employees say the reorganization was also a form of retaliation against agency administrators who had criticized top management, including charges of sexual harassment. In the first of a two-part special report on these changes, MTN's Mike Dennison examines what happened and why. State Corrections Director Reginald Michael announced a reorganization September 26th, the same day that employees heard the results of an outside report on the work environment at the agency. Sources told MTN News that the report, initiated by the governor's office, chided some DOC managers for poor communication, resisting change, and not welcoming the new director, who began last year. The report also recommended the reorganization, which eliminated at least three top positions and consolidated others. Former Personnel Director Kyla Shepard says a half dozen people who had complained about the management had their positions eliminated or changed. There were concerns about the truthfulness of the new leadership and how they were interacting with the uh, leadership team. Of the 12 leaders within the central office, um, eight of them had voiced concerns and six of them had faced retaliation. Shepard was fired in August, accused of illegally taping a meeting with an employee facing possible discipline. She says the charge was manufactured, not long after she formally asked the director be investigated for sexual harassment or discrimination against several female employees. Governor Steve Bullock's office says an investigation by state personnel officials turned up no legal grounds to discipline anyone for harassment. Shepard has filed her own discrimination complaint with the State Human Rights Bureau, which is investigating her charges. Correction officials told MTN News the reorganization streamlines the agency and will help it better achieve its goals. 
Those goals include carrying out justice reinvestment, a set of sentencing reforms enacted last year meant to reduce the number of people in prison and repeat offenders. But former employees say they're committed to those goals too, and any suggestion that they wanted to undermine the new director or the department is not true. Veteran DOC Administrator Sidney McKenzie resigned in frustration this fall after 29 years at the agency. The leadership team at Department of Corrections are all leaders on that team because of their years of experience, because of their professionalism. You know, you don't all of a sudden become a disgruntled, dysfunctional management team because you don't like a new boss. These leaders that have voiced concerns have actually produced and led 90% of the change that has gone on within corrections over the past four plus years. You can't lose the level of positions and talent that the department has through this reorganization without experiencing difficulty in implementing the justice reinvestment. Deputy Corrections Director Cynthia Wolken told MTN News this week that the changes will strengthen justice reinvestment by putting more resources into probation, parole, and other programs to reduce repeat offenders. Officials from the governor's office or top managers here at the Corrections Department wouldn't appear on camera to talk about these charges or the reorganization. Tomorrow, we'll talk more about the reorganization and the changes at one program. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Now you can find Mike Dennison's more detailed report on the DOC reorganization at ktvq.com. Well, one issue that won't be addressed in the 2018 session of Congress is funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund. In spite of bipartisan support, the LWF will apparently have to wait until the new Congress convenes in January. According to Montana Senator Steve Daines, the Senate refused to allow those bills to reach the floor last night. Now, the Land and Water Conservation Fund is funded by offshore oil and gas royalties, but the fund expired this past September and has not yet been reauthorized. Until Congress acts, the fund is losing an estimated $2 million per day. But Dane says the good news is both Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Minority Leader Chuck Schumer have guaranteed that the land bills will be heard in the Senate next year. Also included in the lands package is the Yellowstone Gateway Bill, which withdraws federal mineral rights on public land near Yellowstone National Park. Montana Senator John Tester is one of the primary sponsors on that bill. Well, what started as a night to check out Christmas lights here in Billings ended when a car hit a pedestrian carrying a six-year-old girl. The man and girl were headed across Stone Street on the Billings South Side when the Subaru SUV hit them. The man was taken to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The little girl suffered only minor injuries. There's no word yet on any citations. Turning to weather, Bob, we had a little break from the winds, but they are kicking right back up again. Yeah, we've got another weather system moving into the state. Let me show you what's happening out there. We start off tonight with our current winds around the state, and you'll notice here in Billings, the winds have picked up. At one time today, it was like 5 mile per hour, and this last hour, it's gone up to 36 miles per hour, so something's afoot, my friend. You'll notice here we have a wind advisory for the Beartooth Foothills uh, from Bozeman all the way towards, uh, I believe, Nye, looking for 55 to 60 mile per hour winds through tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. On the Rocky Mountain front, we're looking at 70 miles mile per hour winds in the snowies, probably more like 60 mile per hour winds, high wind warnings there. Plus at the uh, Missoula Airport, that's a airport weather warning, looking for snow and freezing rain in that area. And here's the reason why. Uh, throughout most of western Montana, winter weather advisory there could see maybe four to eight inches of snow moving into the region there. So we'll see what happens. Our forecast for Billings, it's going to be a little changing here. We'll chat about that in a few more minutes. All right, thanks so much, Bob. Well, nearly two years after fire damaged its building, the First Interstate Bank Heights branch opened a new building today. The more than 6,000 square foot bank has the latest technology and design. And the fire happened in March of 2017 and caused enough damage for management to decide to rebuild. For 19 months, some employees worked in a trailer in the parking lot. First Interstate has used the same design in Miles City, Gillette, and soon in Hardin. 15 employees are now working in the new facility. We are so glad to be back here in this beautiful bank. 
and all together as one team is great. With the drive up, just the technology with the security cameras, a little bit speedier service. It's a more welcoming client experience. Anymore now you can get on your phone and do most of your banking, but if you're going to come to the branch you want to feel warm and welcome and for our bank to be able to invest into the technology that they have, it's it feels good as an employee and, and seeing the direction we're going, it's, it's very exciting. Now First Interstate is planning a grand opening ceremony for the branch at 730 Main Street in January. Well, coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, prosthetics are getting a major upgrade at MIT. We'll check out the latest technology. Plus, take a look. These wheels are rolling into 2019 with a deserving family inside. We'll meet the family. And in sports, Scott delivers crosstown basketball action between Senior and Central as they count down for the holiday break. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.